In this video, we're going to talk about how to edit the path variable on your Windows computer. I am going to be doing this using git bash as my command line program. This is going to allow me to run Unix based commands. So if you want to follow along, you need to use git bash or some other Unix uh, emulator on your Windows system. So to start off, let's talk about what the path variable is. It's basically just a setting on your computer with a list of directories where uh, executable programs and files exist. Uh, as an example of this, let's say we're working in command line and we execute a simple command like the list command. Right? It's just going to show us the directory contents. When we invoke that command, our system needs to know where to find that underlying program for that command. And the way it's going to do that is it's going to look in the directories listed within our path variable. Uh, just to show what it finds, another command we can run is which, followed by the command we're interested in. And this is going to tell us where it's actually locating this command. So you can see in this case, it's finding it in our user bin directory. And based on this, we could assume that within our path variable, we should see the path user bin. To see that that's the case, let's go down in the notes. And the first thing we could do is have our system tell us what our path variable is currently set to. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the echo command and we're going to reference our path environment variable via this dollar sign syntax. So from this output, we see a bunch of paths, each one separated by a colon. It's a little bit hard to read because it's all in one line. So I have this other command here that will format the output so that each path is on its own line. So let's run this one. All right, and that's a little bit more legible. We can see each path, including that user bin directory, which is where we saw the list command existed. So now that we see what our current path variables are, let's talk about how we could edit this. And the way we're going to do this, if we're following along in the notes, the first thing we want to do is open up our computer's control panel. There's a couple different ways you could find this, but the most straightforward way is to search for sysdm.cpl. Uh, and you could just search for that within your Windows search bar. So I'll go ahead and pull it up here. And then once you have the control panel open, go to the advanced tab, then go to environment variables. And there's two sections of variables here, one for just the currently logged in user, and then we also have some system wide variables. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to edit this on a user based level. So I'm going to find the variable called path. If this is not something you see on your end, you could create it. So just click the new button. But in my case, it exists. So I'm just going to choose it and then I'm going to go to edit. And then I could see any current paths I have set for this user. Now, you can see here, I only have two paths listed, but when we were looking at the output of our path variable, there were many more paths listed. Uh, and the reason is, is just because this is going to be pulling in all our paths, uh, including ones we set on a user level, as well as the ones down here on a system level. Uh, now, pulling that back up again, what we want to do is we want to add a new path here. So I'm just going to say new. And at this point, you would enter the path to whatever directory that contains the program that you're trying to run from command line. Uh, for my example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a path to a program on my system called XAMPP. It's just some web server software, and as part of it, it includes an installation of PHP that we can run from command line. So I'm going to add that directory here just as proof of concept. Um, you know, whatever information you're typing here is going to be dependent on what path you're, you're trying to add, what program you're trying to access. Uh, but like I said, for my case, we're going to just point to the C directory. I've got a XAMPP folder there, and I know there's a PHP subdirectory within there, and the executable is actually in that directory. All right, and that's a key thing. We're not trying to point to the specific file or program that we want to be invoking. We want to point to the directory where that file or program exists. All right, so with that in place, I'm going to say OK. Do OK again to get out of my control panel, get out of my system properties. And then to test this out, I want to close out git bash and reopen it to make it recognize these uh, changes. And to confirm that it worked, the first thing I'll do coming back is let me run that same command to output my path contents. And perfect, there we go. So there's that C XAMPP PHP directory. It does output it a little weird in that it like strips the colon from the C directory and it starts it with a forward slash. Um, but you can see it's doing that to all the other paths as well. And that's, that's to be expected. So now that we've confirmed that our new path is there, the other thing we could do is try to execute the program we're trying to make accessible. So in this case, um, it's PHP. So what I'm gonna do is just run PHP and I'll just have it output the current version. All right, it looks like I'm getting uh, expected information there, so it was able to find it. The other thing we could do is use that which command again, just to see where it's locating PHP. 
and perfect. You can see that's resolving as expected.